Now listen to this. The U.S. has charged three men who it says made millions by hacking U.S. law firms. Their indictment says that the Chinese traders used confidential information about mergers to make over $4 million. They bought shares in at least five publicly traded companies before uh, announcements that the firms were being acquired. CBS News Justice reporter Paula Reed joins us now from Washington to discuss this case. And when you read about just how much money they were able to make, it is stunning. Break down for us how they access this information, Paula. Errol, this case, this is the future of insider trading. Usually when you think of this crime, you think of somebody passing along a tip to a family member or passing along information on the golf course. But here, three Chinese citizens on the other side of the planet managed to hack into U.S. law firms that were working on some big deals. They used the information that they stole from these law firms to buy some stock on some deals that hadn't quite become public. Once the deals became public, they sold the stock and made millions of dollars in profit. Now, since this can be the type of thing that prosecutors would need to look out for in the future, how can firms protect themselves against this type of thing? And just how dangerous was this in the first place? It's incredibly dangerous, Errol. This is part of a larger trend that we're seeing. Hackers are becoming more diversified and more sophisticated. It seems they're no longer content to just steal your credit card information and buy some skis. They want to make money on the markets. And this is one of a few cases that we've seen in just the past few months where hackers stole information and tried to move the prices of stocks. In terms of what law firms can do to protect themselves, in this case, you need to protect your servers, protect your passwords. But Errol, the biggest challenge for law enforcement, they tell me, is they need law firms or any business that's been hacked to come forward. Because rarely, if you read the details of these cases, rarely do they just go after one target. In this case, they made 100,000 attempts to hack various law firms over just seven months. So if you are successfully hacked, if you come forward to law enforcement, perhaps, perhaps they can protect other businesses as well. That is just stunning. And so then how difficult is it for prosecutors to actually make these cases and get the evidence that they need. As you mentioned, a lot of these firms don't come forward in the first place to present any evidence they might have. Perhaps they don't realize or even know what to look for. How difficult are these cases to prosecute? It's incredibly difficult. And as you noted, the hardest thing for law enforcement is getting companies to come forward. But law enforcement officials always tell me when I'm reporting on these cases, they say, look, there's two kinds of companies. The ones that know they've been hacked, and the ones that just don't know they've been hacked. But you'll notice in the court documents, the law firms aren't named. That is part of an attempt to protect these companies and encourage them to come forward. And only once they come forward can the FBI, other law enforcement, start to do that forensic analysis. So they need to get all of the evidence for cyber crimes like this. This kind of financial fraud, though, hacking, stealing information, manipulating markets, this is increasingly becoming a priority for the Department of Justice. All right, this should open everyone's eyes. At the very least, we have Paula Reed on the case joining us mm -hmm. from Washington. Paula, thanks. Thanks.